Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Hello everyone, my name is John. Nice to meet you. This time, I'm back in this math lesson where I will be working with senior five students in our unit four of solving equation by numerical method. Remember, we have been discussing about linear interpolation, locating the root by change of variable, uh, by change of sign, I'm sorry, locating of root by graphical method. We have been how we can solve equation using Newton Rasson method. So this time, we are going to continue with those kind of uh, iterative methods, solving those kind of equation using a new method known as the fixed point iteration. But before that, let us pass it through Newton Rasson method. And you have an exercise on that. Please get your exercise book. Of course, you may have your calculators and spans because these kind of exercises need calculations. There you have an activity. Look at on your screen. Show that the equation 3x cubed plus x minus 5 equals 0 has a root between 1 and 2. Then, by Newton Raphson method, find the root correct two decimal places with a tolerance limit of 0 0.005. I know you have been discussed that kind of exercises. It is not easy because the calculation takes a long time, but because you are familiar with your calculators, I hope we work together, but me, I worked those calculations before. So you, you with your calculators, you will see if the calculations found here will be the same as you're going to get. So without wasting the time, Remember that on newton raphson method, we are given a function, and you need to solve f of x equals 0. And by newton raphson method, we have xn plus 1, which is equal to xn minus f of xn divided by f derivative of xn. It is what we need. And the tolerance limit is 0 0.005. And we need the limit. First of all, we have to locate the root. Our function is 3x cubed plus x minus 5. And the interval is 1 and 2. So we have to calculate f of 1 and f of 2. The product, this is 1, no, 3 times 1. Power 3 plus 1 minus 5 times 3 times 2. Power 3 plus 2 minus 5. And with your calculation, I hope you have a calculator like this or the perform the one than this one. When you calculate, you'll be having minus 21. And as this minus 21 is negative, means that is less than zero, you know, by change of sign, there is a root. So it means there is a root between one and two, or there is a root in this interval, isn't it? Yeah. Then, from our function, we need f of n in the formula. Means that in this function, x will be replaced by xn. So 
xn, because the function is there, I'll be having three times xn cubed plus xn, then this is minus five. Eh? Minus five. And uh, we need also the derivative of the function. So, as our function is here, the derivative is three times three x power two, that is nine x squared, plus one, the derivative of x is one. Then, f derivative of xn, we enter this derivative, x will be replaced by xn, and you get nine xn squared plus one. So for the calculations, Using this formula means n is changing from 1, n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. So to get the first approximation, initial guess, we take the middle of our interval. It means that we have 1 plus 2 divided by 2, and we get 1.5. That is xn. So when you replace, means that x, that is x1, it means n equals 1. When we enter our formula, we replace n by 1, we get xn plus 1, that is x2, which is equal to x1 minus f of x1 divided by f derivative of x1. So the calculation is there. As x1 is 1.5, f of x1 is f1.5, we enter this equation, x will be replaced by 1.5, with your calculation, you will get 6.625, and when you replace 1.5 in our derivative here, you'll we'll be having 21.5, then in the formula, newton Lawson method, you replace this is x2, which is equal to x1 minus f of x1 divided by f derivative of x1. So as the f of x1 is here, that is 6.625, divided by f derivative of 1.5, it is here, the calculation will give you 1.188. And the difference between xn plus 1 minus xn, it is 1.8. 188 minus 1.5, and you get 0 0.312. And this is greater than 0 0.005, the limiting or the error. So it is greater than 0 0.005, you have to continue. So with x2, this is x2. So means this is, will be x3. x2, we take 1.188. When you introduce this value in the function, you get 2.218. At the same time, replacing this value in the derivative, we'll be having 13.702. And we continue our formula. x3 will be having 1.099. So, the absolute value of xn plus 1 minus xn, I take that value, 1.099 minus 1 1.188 to get 0 0.088. Still, this is greater than 0 0.005. As this difference is still greater than the error, I have to continue. So there I have x3, that is x3, which is 1.099. When I introduce this value in the function, I will get 0 0.0811. When I introduce the same value in the derivative, I'll be having 11.870, right? Then, with the formula, I'll be having ax4. Introducing this value, they are well calculated here, I'll be having 1.092. So the difference between this value in the previous one means 1.092 minus 1.099, it is absolute value, of course. I have 0 0.007. And if you observe 
This is less than 0 0.05. That is 0 0.05. So, as this limit, this quantity is less than 0 0.05, I have to stop by here, means that the root, the root is 1.0. 92, but as we have to give an answer corrected to two decimal places, it means that x will be equal to 1.09, of course, corrected to two, two decimal places. I hope your result, your calculations are not different from what you have here. So the our question or our equation have been solved by Newton, Ralph, and Method. So the answer is this one. So they're going to continue with the same unit, of course, with a new method, method known as the fixed point iteration. So we need to know what is the fixed point of a given function. If we have a function f of x, or g of x is a function. And we have quantity, let it be a function of x, and x is a real number. So if x is equal to g of x, if x is equal to g of x, then x is the fixed point of g of x. For instance, let us take g of x equals maybe x squared minus 2, for instance. And I take x equals negative 1, and x is equal to 2, for instance. So if I calculate minus 1 is equal to g of minus 1, means I'm going to calculate, means that I have minus 1, which is equal to minus 1 squared minus 2. This is 1 minus 2 which is equal to minus 1. So you see, minus 1 is equal to minus 1. Means that minus 1 is equal to g of minus 1. Means that minus 1 is the fixed point for this function. Is it clear? OK, thank you. Likewise, if x is equal to 2, 2, is this equal to of g of 2? If they are equal, means that 2 will be the fixed point for that function. So 2 is equal to, this is 2 squared minus 2, and I get 4 minus 2 means that 2 is equal to 2. It means x2 is the fixed point of g of x. I hope you understand what is a fixed point of a given function. It is a value for which the function of the value at that number is equal to the number. Then, Method of fixed point iteration. First of all, you are given a function f of x to be zero. You want to solve that equation using the fixed point iteration. So what I'm going to do, you change this function, change f of x into the form x, minus g of x 
equals zero. Means that if f of x equals zero, it means, and f of x is equal to x minus g of x, means that to have f of x equals x minus g of x, and this is equal to zero. So you see this g of x is a new function. The new function. So then when you solve, if you solve, x equals g of x, of course, by computation or computing, means that by iteration, right? If you solve this equation, you have already solved f of x. Means that if, if uh, like p naught is the root, is a root of f of x, it means f of p naught equals zero, isn't it? Because the root is that number for which the function equal to zero. So replacing there, you have f of p is equal to zero, means that you have a zero, which is equal to p naught minus g of p naught, which is equal to zero, and when you solve this, you will get p naught, which is equal to g of p naught. When you have this p naught at the left hand side, which is equal to g of p naught, already this is a fixed point of that function. That is the way you are going to work on. Of course, when this is verified and x equals g of x is the fixed point of g of x, it means that you have xn plus 1 is equal to g of xn. You solve this equation. This is also a iteration formula. Yeah. So for this fixed point theorem, we need a fraction or expression which should converge in a given interval. Here, for instance, if you have a function, g of x continuous in a given interval, right? And you have the real number x in that interval, and the f is the continuous also, g of x is lying in that interval. That's one. Again, for any value of x, real number of course, if g of derivative, yeah, both well, in that interval, this, and g derivative of this function belongs in that interval, and you have g derivative of x, which is less than k, k is a fixed number, positive of course, such that zero is less than k, which is less than one, it means for any value of x taken in the given interval, the derivative for that value is lying in that interval and is less than one, between zero and one, means that xn plus one equals g of xn converges to the root, let's call it p naught. And you have to find that uh, p naught so that this condition is met. So that is the method. Then, let us explain the more through example. Here we have the equation. We need to solve this equation using the given method in this interval. First of all, we need we know that as the function is a polynomial, f of x is, is lying in that interval. And you have to manipulate this equation and you from x cubed minus x minus one equals zero, I can have x cubed which is equal to one plus x and x is equal to cubic root of one plus x. Also, you can take x cubed, which is equal to one plus x, 
And when you divide both sides by x, you get x squared, which is equal to 1 over x plus 1. And the x is equal to square root of 1 plus 1 over x. Of course, because we are in 1, 2 positive, I ignore negative sign. If you continue, you can have another transformation. And you verify the conditions. For instance, if you calculate for this 1.5 is lying in this interval 1 and 2, you calculate the g of 1.5 using this to get, of course, g 1 of x is equal to this function cubic root of 1 plus x. When you calculate in that uh, function, the derivative, derivative of 1.5 is equal to, I got 11.25, and this is not in that interval 1 and 2 means that the formula can't be used. But if you take g2 of x to be that function, I'm uh, no, sorry, this is, this was 0 0.18, which is less than one, it means this can work. But if you try from here, x, from here you can get x cubed plus 1 is equal to x, and you try this, you can't get the value in this interval. So using this as it can converge means that we can use this formula to get to solve our equation. So you have your calculators. We are going to use that function, g of x is equal to cubic root of 1 plus x, then x1 is g of x naught, means that you have a cubic root of 1 plus 1 1.5, and we get 1.3572. So calculating x2, it will be g of 1.3572, means that you have cubic root of 1, 1 plus 1.3572. You will be having, you will be having 1.32588. When you calculate x3, which is g of x1, means this value, You'll be having one point, no, this is three zero eight six. Here we get one point three two five eight eight. When we need x four, means that g of x three, this value, you get one point thirty two. 49 x5, which is g of x4, it will be 1.32476. x6, which is g of x5, this is uh, 1.32472. x7, is equal to g of x6, which is 1.32471. And also x8 is g of x7, which is equal to 1.32471. Do you see? If you compare this value, 1.32471 and 
and 1.3271 means that f of x naught, xn plus 1 is equal to g of xn, and this value is the same, means that x naught, let me call it x naught, or p naught is equal to g of p naught, means that that is the root, isn't it? So it means as these values are the same corrected to five decimal places, means that this quantity can be taken as the root of our equation. Are we together? That is the root of our equation. You may follow the calculations, right? So as we have to give our answer correct to four decimal places, I can conclude that the root, let me give the answer here, the root is 1.3247. Correct to four decimal places. And I'm done with that with that message. But it is not only the one you can change this formula, this equation, many manipulation or rearrangement, you can get another kind of formula where x is equal to a new function. As example, you can get, with some transformation, you can have G3x equals square root of 1 plus 1 over x. If you work with this equation, if you work with that equation, at x7, x6, x7, you will get the same value I have here. You will get the same. Please. Try this new function with what we did there at x6, x7, you will get the same. Means that even that formula can work with what we have there. That is the fixed point iteration. Please repeat the exercise with this method, and you have a homework there to help you to understand. For you, of course, for some question number two, for instance, and number three, the formula was given. Please, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. I hope you will make it with different way you have. I hope to meet you next time in bisection method. Have a nice day. Say doing mathematics. <laughs>